introduction here before we get started on any new material. The, uh, in general, the way you want to attack your homework, start with WebAssign. Okay? Go, go to WebAssign, get logged in, open up the homework, look at the first problem. And uh, try it. See how it goes. If you know it, great. And if you get it right, it'll give you a little green check, check mark. If you get it wrong, it'll give you a little red X, one or the other. And, and don't worry if you get the red X, you got four more tries. You get a total of five. So, and there's no penalty for a wrong answer. So, and by the way, just as a side note, some of them are true and false. How many tries do you get? How many options are there? You j I'm just saying you better get those right, okay? Uh, <clears throat> another note uh, on WebAssign, um, if it asks for a paragraph answer, it's, I don't care what anybody tells you, that thing right there is nothing but a hunk of plastic and metal. It has no brain, it is not smart. It's not, it's a chunk of plastic. So if you write, if it's asking for a paragraph, it doesn't know how to read, it's not smart. You can write anything you want. Put your mom's favorite meatloaf recipe on there. What? I don't care. It'll say, oh, green check, you wrote something. Good job. Okay, so I'm just saying, if it's so it asks for a paragraph answer, you better get that one right too. Because <laughs> all you gotta do is just write something and it'll give you those points. Okay? With that said, those true false ones and the paragraph ones, they're there for a reason. You need to know how to explain that in paragraph form. You need to know why it's true or false. You see what I'm saying? So the questions are valid questions. The points will be easy for you to get, but you should really know how to answer them correctly. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, there are a lot of number answers that, of course, the answer is anywhere from negative infinity to positive, positive infinity, and you have to get the right one, and, and that'll take a little more time. But you better figure those out also. But what I'm saying is they're all equally important. It's just some points are easier to get. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know what to do, this is, which is usually the way it goes, right? Your first, the first time you get to a problem, you'll read the question, and, and, and your usual response is, what does the question even at mean? Right? Let alone, what's the answer? Uh, so, so go look at the notes. We're going to talk about all that stuff in class. Go to the textbook. There's a little button at the bottom of the questions. Um, and you can click the button and it'll open up the textbook to that section. It's really nice. So uh, <clears throat> do some background checking. And then, and then here's always the process, okay? You read the paragraph. Even if you don't understand what the paragraph is asking, it doesn't matter. You can do this, okay? Write down what you know. What I mean is, what is the, a boat was traveling at three miles an hour east. You can write that. Speed, three miles an hour. Direction, east. You see what I'm saying? It, just reading the paragraph, even if you don't understand it, you know some things. Does that make sense? So write down what you know. And then it'll ask a question. How far did the boat travel? Or something like that, okay? And, and then, so what you need to know. So write those two things down. It'll usually be a list of like five or th you know, four or five things that you know, and then one thing that you need to know, okay? So write that down. And every time you can do that. And then draw yourself a picture. Now, everybody says, I'm a bad artist. I can't draw a picture. What are you talking about? I guarantee you, I'm a worst. I'm not as good of an artist as you are. I, I think I had to switch the grammar around, but I, I'm a horrible artist, okay? I, I, I'm horrible. <laughs> but many of these problems you can't do without a picture. So just get in the habit of drawing a picture every time, whether you need it or not your life will be better in the end because of it, okay? So, uh, and then I think there's one last step here, and this is the hard part. Figure out which equations and methods apply. In other words, apply logic, and that's the hard part, right? So, but basically all this stuff up to the last step, you can do no matter your level of understanding. So every problem, go through these steps. And, and the last part is the hard part, I, I, I agree. But you can do all of it except for this part, even if you don't know what to do. And hopefully, you will figure this part out as we go along, okay? Well, with that said, let me show you some basic stuff here. <clears throat> 
arc length. Y'all remember the arc length equation? There it is, S equals R theta. Uh, what does that mean? Well, let me see. Um, And even if you don't remember this, you probably do remember this and didn't know that you knew it. Let me explain what I mean here. Okay, so uh, here's what this means, okay? If you've got an arc, that's a, a piece of a circle, okay? Then if you know where the center of that circle is, and you've got a radius here, and a radius here, this looks like a piece of pizza, okay? Which of course makes me hungry because I haven't quite finished my breakfast yet, but that's another story. Anyway, so th the question is, how long is this arc? That's S. S means arc length. How long is that arc? And the answer is the radius times the angle. And that's it. That's the arc length equation. Now there's a catch here, a caveat. You can't use degrees. I know it's sad. Because everybody's like, I like degrees. You know, how many degrees is it all the way around the circle? 360. Everybody knows that one, right? It's like, I got it. Perpendicular, how many degrees is that? 90. This one's intuitive for us, right? How many degrees are there in a line? You know, like from here to a lot to the other side of the line. How many degrees is that? 180. Like degrees are easy. We got it. But the problem is this equation can't use degrees. If you use degrees, you'll get it wrong. It just doesn't work. You've got to use the one that nobody likes, but we all have to use radians. So let me ask those same questions again, only with radians. How many radians is it once around? Two pi. How many is it from here to straight across? Yeah, it's two pi all the way around, right? So halfway around is just pi. And, 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 and that's just a number, by the way. Pi is just, you know the number, 3.14. It keeps on going. There's like, they've measured, I don't know, 180 data decimal places or something like that. But all you need to know is 3.14. And it's on your calculator too. So. Um, what about 90 degrees? Yeah, what's 90 degrees in radians? Pi over 2. Yep. So this equation is a beautiful little equation. It works every single time. You got to use radians, though. Don't use degrees. It'll get, it'll get it wrong. Web assign will give you the big red X. Okay? Y'all doing all right? Now, um, <clears throat> you have used this equation before, and you, I, it's almost 90% sure that you've got it memorized. It's already there. Let me show you. What's the circumference of a circle? I heard somebody say it. There you go. 2 pi r. What is that? Well, let's see. That's from here all the way around. Right? And if you know where the middle is, there's your r. How many degrees is it all the way around? Oh, do y'all see that? Look, circumference. Well, that's S for the whole circle, right? Here's R. What's this? That's theta. Once around. Did y'all see that? Does that make sense to everybody? So you've already been using the arc length equation. You just didn't realize that's what you were doing. Everybody okay? Y'all doing all right? Okay. Um, just in case you have to do something tricky, like convert, I don't know, 34 and a half degrees to radians, how do you do that? Okay, let me, sh let me show you how to do that. Um, <clears throat> let me remind you of everybody's favorite thing, the unit circle. Y'all remember this? They were like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I didn't want to, but I do, <laughs> right? Okay, uh, on, on degrees, it's 0, 90, 180, 
270, and then back to where you started is 360, right? But if we do this in, I'll use a different color here. I only have a couple colors. I need to go to Walmart and get more markers. <clears throat> in radians, you start at zero up to 90. We already told y'all. Y'all already told me this one. What was it? Pi over two. And 180. What is that? Pi. Here's the hard one. Y'all remember this one? There you go. Y'all are doing all right. Three pi over two, and then back to the beginning is. 2 pi, okay? All of these are equalities. Here's what I mean. Pi, radians, is 180 degrees. They're equal. 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. They're equal. 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2. They're equal. Z well, of course, 0, 0, that doesn't help, but 2 pi is 360. They're equal. Does that, does that make sense? So if I wanted to take... Um, uh, I'm going to be a little challenged here because normally I'd just start in that upper left upper left hand corner up there and just work my way down the boards all day long. <laughs> but I'm limited to the camera, so I have to be between here and the edge of the screen. I can't move. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do a lot of erasing and turning on and off and stuff like that. <clears throat> so if you have 34.5 degrees, how do we turn this into radians? Yeah. Yeah, you can use any one of these equalities that you want. It doesn't matter which one you want. I like this one. I think this one's the easiest to use. But if you want to use one of the other ones, go for it. They'll get you there. Okay? I'm going to use this one, though. Okay? So what we do is we say, okay, that's degrees upstairs there. So I need to put degrees down here. That's 180 degrees. And that's the same thing as pi radians up there. No, no. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a clever number one. I wish I could say I was clever enough to invent this, but I wasn't. I'm just going. I'm just reiterating it to you. What, what's five divided by five? What's ten divided by ten? What's apple divided by apple? It's not an apple. It's one. <laughs> let me let me say this a different way. Anything divided by itself is, y'all right with that? Okay, look. This is this. They're the same thing. Do you see what I'm saying? Now look over here. This is this. Anything divided by itself is, oh, that's kind of mind boggling, isn't it? Because <laughs> you're like, that doesn't look like one. It is. <laughs> And so, when we take 1 times anything, what does it do to it? Did we change it? What's 5 times 1? What's 6 times 1? What's 20 times 1? What's apple times 1? Now you can say that. That's an apple. <laughs> okay, do y'all see what I'm saying here? So, we did 34 and a half times 1. What do we end up with? 34 and a half. Except that it's, here's what, here's what happens now. The degrees cancel out, and we get the same answer, the same angle, nothing's changed, just the units. Okay? How y'all doing? Somebody want to punch that out for me? What is that number? By the way, the calculator, okay, so two things. First of all, in this class, like, like just, I mean, in general, but also during this hour that we have three times a week, you're going to use that calculator. But then also for your homework, you're going to use that calculator. And also on your test, you're going to use that calculator. So bring it to class every day. You're going to need it. But, but also, one of the things that gets people on the test is good old-fashioned, just plain old boring, button pushing mistakes. I'm just, just not pushing the buttons in the right order. It, it gets you on the test, okay? So the, the way you solve button pushing mistakes before you get to the test is practice. Push as many buttons on that calculator as you can in the right order so that you make sure you do it right. 
So here's my point. Bring your calculator to test, to, to class, so you can practice pushing buttons, so that when we get to the test, you don't make a silly button pushing mistake. Yeah? Is this just going to be 34.5 about True. And then, and then times, pi. times pi. And use the pi button. I mean, you're right. If your calculator doesn't have the pi button, you can just type 3.14. But if you've got the pi button, use it. It'll give you more decimal places. You can keep pi in the answer. Um, okay, so let me clarify that question. When using WebAssign, should you keep pi in the answer? Okay, WebAssign, I, I've said it once already, is just a stupid computer. It really doesn't know anything. It doesn't have a brain. It, it's just looking for a number answer. So, so don't plug pi in, just, I mean, do plug pi in and just get the number, okay? On the test, I don't care what you do. Whether you give me the number or you write pi beside it, either way, I'm happy, as long as it's right. <clears throat> Anybody got it? What is this? 0. 0.602. 0. 0.602, is that what you said? That sounds about right. Anybody else want to con confer that? Okay, yeah, good, okay. <laughs> Any questions? Y'all doing all right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, so I got it. Okay, physicists, all we do all day long, I told you this last time, we describe the real world with the language of math. That's all we do, okay? So I got started in grad school, and I, I'm on my way to being a physicist. I'm all excited, and you know, my advisor and I, we've let me back up a little bit. Physics, and engineering for that matter, grad school is paid for. Here's why. Because grad students in physics and engineering have to wrestle with, hopefully answer, but not always, a question that nobody's wrestled with before. Let me rephrase that. Come up with a hypothesis and test it. Okay, that's what you have to do. To get a master's degree with a thesis or a PhD, no matter what, we, you have to do that. And then you write a book about it. It's called a dissertation. Okay? So you have to come up with a question. You have to come up with a hypothesis. And you have to have tested it. Okay, does this make sense? And, and you usually spend five to seven years doing that. It's a, it's a slow process. Okay? And, and here's why it's paid for. <laughs> because industry is out there making stuff and they get stuck, and they have problems, and they don't have answers. So here's, look at this, look at this, here's the situation. Industry has questions and no answers. Grad students need questions and have to spend time answering them. Oh, you see a relationship here, right? So here's how grad school is paid for. Your advisor goes out and talks to industry and says, hey, we're gonna wrestle with, with these sort of issues, do you have any questions that we could wrestle with? And industry says, yeah, we got that. We can either hire our own scientists and all our own equipment and it's going to be crazy expensive, or we can give some money to those poor grad students over there. <laughs> and so there you go, that's how this works, okay? So grad school and physics and engineering is paid for, and you just have to answer their questions. You don't have to come up with your own, but you do have to come up with your own hypothesis and how to answer it and that sort of thing, right? So anyway, so NASA gave us a good question and we were wrestling with it and I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm working with NASA, this is cool, you know, and I've got this great hypothesis with their problem and, and so I've got to design a device to test our hypothesis. You, you can't go to Walmart and buy one of these devices. Why? It doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist. Nobody's even... Nobody knows how to answer this question, let alone how to test whether your answer is right or not. You see what I'm saying? There's no manufacturing facility, facility makes this. You've got to design your own apparatus, build it yourself. This is why it takes so long, okay? So I designed this nice apparatus and all the little pieces that go with it, and the physics department has a full-time machinist, because that's all, it's the physics department is full of people who do this all the time, right? So they've got a full-time machinist who's really good at just making stuff. And I walked down to this machinist, his name is Mark, and I walked down and said, okay, Mark, Here's my plans. I need 
make it this way and I'm gonna put it together this way and I did a hole right here, one centimeter diameter. And I was real precise, my drawing looked really good. I had spent a lot of time on it. I had some drafting in high school and so I knew what, I, what how to do it. And, <clears throat> and that man proceeded to cuss me out for the next 45 minutes. I mean, it was just nonstop cussing me out. One big cuss word after the next. And I was going, I don't even know what I did wrong. You know, and he's just like going, laying it on, okay? And all I did was say, I need a one centimeter circle right there. And that was worthy of cussing out for 45 minutes. <laughs> and here's my question, what was wrong with that? Why did he cuss me out for 45 minutes? Because he was right, I was wrong. What was wrong with that? Here's the answer. There's no such thing as a perfect circle. What are you talking about? Th this whole thing right here, S equals R theta, that's, that's ivory tower stuff. Okay, that's like, if you have a perfect circle, that's the answer. But let me tell you something, there ain't no such thing as a perfect circle. They don't exist. You say, well, the sun, that's a nice big ball. Yeah, it's not perfect, go look at it. I mean, it's, it's got bumps that come and go and flares that flare out and, I mean, it's, and where do you even define the edge of it? You see what I'm saying? There's no such thing as a perfect circle. Get yourself the best compass in the world and the best pencil on the end and draw real careful. It's still not perfect. Put it under a microscope and look at it. You'll see it's bumps everywhere. There's no such thing as a perfect circle. And that was the cuss out for 45 minutes. <laughs> Do you all see what I'm saying? So what should I have done when I said I need a one centimeter circle right here? Say it again. I heard. Say it louder. No, no, no. Here's the thing. When, you go, when he goes to make a, a hole, a one centimeter circle, okay, he's got to use a drill bit, okay? And that drill's got to go in a, that drill bit's got to go in a drill, and he's going to bring that drill press down, it's going to hit the metal, and that drill bit's going to be spinning. And it's flexible, the metal's flexible, it's spinning so it's wobbling, there's going to be pluses and minuses. I need to give him how accurate do I need that circle? Is it one centimeter plus or minus half a millimeter? Is it one centimeter plus or minus a whole millimeter? Because how close to a circle you get depends on how much money he has to spend on machinery and drill bits. The closer to perfect you get it, the more money he's got to spend. There ain't no such thing as a perfect circle. You can't get it perfect. But closer costs more money. Do you see what I'm saying? So here's my point. That's the ivory, ivory tower stuff. Reality is, well, and, and let me just say another thing. This is the way it goes. We're gonna go through this whole semester. I'm gonna teach you all this stuff and say, this is how reality works. It's all ivory tower stuff. Because this is just entry level physics. You get the next step, guess what we're going to do? We're going to get, I'm going to say, oh, all that stuff you already learned? That was almost right, but we ignored this reality, this reality, this reality, and this reality. Let's put a couple of those back in and now do it again. And the problem gets so much harder. <laughs> but that's just upper level college. You go to grad school, <laughs> guess what you do? Same stuff, let's put a couple more realities in there and the problem gets exponentially harder. And then they say, oh, by the way, if you get it all the way to reality, you can't even solve it. It's not even, sol reality is not solvable. We don't even know how a bicycle works. Not all the way. You're like, but we've been making bicycles for hundreds of years. Yep. I went to a, a, a conference full of mechanical engineers and there was a team of scientists who had spent five years studying what makes a bicycle dynamic the way it is. And they didn't have the answer. They spent five years on it. A whole team of scientists. Okay, so what I'm saying is, all you do, your job now, step closer and closer to reality. Reality is not perfect. It's a challenge, okay? Y'all kind of getting a picture of the idea here? Is kind of making sense? Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
Well, now that you have arc link down, let me remind you of something else that you'd forgotten and never wanted to remember again. Significant figures. Oh, so sad. Okay, so just in this class, where do sig figs matter? Two places. Chapter one, because that's where we talk about sig figs. And you're gonna have homework in chapter one, and they're gonna care about sig figs, okay? That's the first place sig figs matter. The second place sig figs matter is lab, because that's where you measure stuff, and that's where sig figs come in, okay? So where you measure things, which is lab, sig figs come in there. Chapter one, where you learn the rules of sig figs, it matters there. Everything in between, I don't care. Okay? So chapter two through whatever we get through, I don't care. And, and by the way, WebAssign doesn't either. WebAssign always wants three sig figs for no good reason. It's totally arbitrary. Unless it's a sig fig question from chapter one. Okay, does that make sense? So here's the rules with sig figs. <clears throat> it's significant if, if it's not zero. Okay, so let me put some numbers up here. How many sig figs are in the number 11? Two. A digit is significant if, if it's not zero, or if it's a zero between two significant digits. So let me ask you this, 110, how many significant figures is that? Two. 1,103, how many significant figures is that? Four. Do y'all see that? The zero counts this time because it's between a one and a three. Okay, this one's the tricky one. This is the one that messes everybody up. It's significant if it's at the end and to the right of the decimal. Okay, so let me, let me, so 110, that zero is not significant. But it's at the end. Why isn't it significant? It's not to the right of the decimal. Okay, what about this one? <clears throat> 0 0.003, how many significant digits are there there? One. One, but they're to the right of the decimal. Why don't they count? They're not at the end. But now if I put a zero here, now how many sig figs do I have? Y'all see that? It's to the right, it's at the end and to the right of the decimal. Do y'all see that one? Is everybody happy with that? And, and all this means is that was a measured value. I had a tool and I measured it. It's exactly the zero. It's not the one or the two, it's the zero. It's a measured value. That's what makes it significant. Okay. Precision is set by the tool. Let me grab a, let me describe this for you. Let me, I'll be right back. I gotta grab a tool. Okay, so here's a line. I need a volunteer. You guys are up close. Okay. This is uh, the tool that Clint's gonna use. <clears throat> okay. He needs to measure that line. You ready? Okay. I'll get this end as close to zero as I can. 
Okay, now you tell me, how long is that line? And don't look up there, just right here. It's a little bit shorter than a meter. Okay, so now here's the, here's the catch. Okay, now, now stay put for just a second. Okay, here's the rule with using any measurement tool. Okay, this one included. You have a mark here at this end, and a mark here at this end. Your brain is capable of splitting this into 10 equal parts. Just imaginary lines, just do 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 do. And guesstimating, yes, it's an estimate, guesstimate, however you want to say it, but you're obliged to do it. All tools oblige you to do this. You're obliged to guesstimate which one, which of those tenth marks that you split up in your head, which one is closest. Does that make sense? Okay, so here we go. Let's try it again. So let me get this at zero over here. Okay, there you go. What is that? Well, you're cheating. Don't look up there. Look at the straight part. I would say closer to the, the six mark. Okay, so he, so this one gives us helps us cheat a little bit. Ignore the ignoring the top part. Just look here. That's halfway, right? Mm -hmm. So it's longer than halfway, and yeah, that's probably pretty close to the sixth, tenth way through, right? So using this tool here, Clint was able to say this is six tenths of a meter. Does that make sense? You all right? So here's my point. You're obliged by the tool. Regardless of how well your brain splits it up in ten parts, regardless of how well your eyeball can see it, doesn't matter. The tool obliges you. Wherever you have a mark and a mark, you're obliged to split it into ten equal parts and get that precision. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, I'm, we're going to do this four times. You're not done. Now I'm going to change the tool on you. Now you're going to use the one you wanted to use. Okay? But now you have different marks on this one. Do you all see that? It's still a one meter meter stick, but now you have a marking here, 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 all the way down. Okay? And, and remember, what's the rule? You're obliged to do what? Yeah, between any two marks. So here's a mark and a mark. You've got to split that into ten equal parts. Does this make sense? Okay, so here we go. Putting this tool up here. How long is this line? You think that's longer than six? Or less than six? A little bit longer than six. Oh, that's pretty close to right on, isn't it? So is it is it 0.59 or 0.61 or is it 0.60? I mean, yeah. Okay. So 0 0.61. Now now notice the last thing here is a guesstimate. That one was easy though, right? Because the number was there for you, but this last one was a guesstimate, just like this one was a guesstimate. But it doesn't change the fact that you're obliged to do the precision of the tool. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Well, guess what? There's another tool. <laughs> this one. And this one has centimeter markings. And it, it, it gives you a little help. Halfway between the centimeter is a halfway point tick mark that helps guide you. That would, that's 0.5. Okay? But between any centimeter, you've got to split it up 10 ways. You're obliged to do that. Okay, so let's measure it now. Okay? Yeah, so it looks like it's it looks like it's shy of that, and after this, right? Like, I feel like it's like right here. Before yeah, yeah. Sixty point five, but I call it sixty point four. Oh, get your eye right in front of it here. Okay, yeah, it looks different. Fifty nine point seven. Yeah. Okay, now notice two things. First of all, he shifted his eyeball. Did y'all see that? When he got his eye right in front of it, he got a better measurement. And I'm going to use a different word, a more accurate measurement. Okay, so let me, let me just clarify this. 
Precision is set by the tool. You don't have a choice. With this tool, three decimal places. Accuracy is how good you are. How good your brain is, is at it, splitting it up. How good your eyeball is at seeing the marks. How good your eye is actually in front of it. Does that make sense? How well the, main, the tool is made. Some of these aren't made very well. You see what I'm saying? So there's lots of, accuracy is subjective. Precision, precision is objective. You don't have a choice. Okay, one more, so one more step and then you're done. This is the tool that you'll be using. Where are all the marks? On the millimeters. So what are you obliged to do? There you go. You are obliged by the tool to split the millimeter markings into 10 equal parts and guesstimate that last decimal place. Okay, you ready for this one? Now let's put it down below so we can see it better. Okay, go ahead. Point five nine, what? Five zero, or is it is it between the five and the six? Uh, yeah. The fifth six, the fifth tick and the sixth tick, or the fourth tick and the fifth tick? Is it right on the tick mark, or is it in between them? It's right on the fifth tick. Okay, so then it would be five zero, oh, because that last one is a guesstimate. How far past it is it? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So notice that zero is significant. Why is it significant? Because he measured it. Does that make sense? If you measure it, it's significant. And you can also say, well, it's to the right of the, it's at the end and to the right of the decimal place. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense to everybody? So when you're in lab and you're using a meter stick, how many decimal places do you need? What, what, what's going to happen if you give me three? Yeah, I'm going to take off points. Okay, because there's two places where sig figs matter, and where are they? Chapter one in lab. Now, if you do it on a test, I'm not going to, because a test isn't chapter one, unless it's a test question over chapter one, <laughs> that which well, there will be one. Let me just go ahead and say that right now. There will be at least one test question over sig figs. So you, you need to know it on the test. Does that make sense to everybody? <laughs> and of course, all, all, the all the time in the lab, you you're going to need to do it. Okay, so let me go back up to this now. <clears throat> so precision's set by the tool. Oh, I didn't say this, but this is important. How many, how many markers are there right here? Quattro, four of them. Right, there's four, marker, four, four markers there. Is it kind of four? Is there any estimate involved in that? It's, it's either four or three, right? You can't have 4.1 markers. You see what I'm saying? So counted items are infinitely precise. It's like 4.000000, how many zeros do you need? It doesn't matter. That's, that, that is four guaranteed. Okay. So, here's the rules, and this is the hard part. This is what messes everybody up. I'm, and I'm telling you, it messes everybody up. I know I just said that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. People have been doing this stuff since, since kindergarten, but it's just it's hard to do. Okay, so here's the rules. If you're adding or subtracting, you keep the least, and so many people quit there. Oh, that makes me sad. Okay. If you're adding or subtracting, what do you do? And somebody says, keep the least. And I just go, Because oh. <laughs> that's not a complete sentence. Keep the least what? Keep the least precise. That's the important part. OK? What about multiplication or division? For multiplication or division, you keep the least or lowest significant figure. <sighs> OK, so let's do an example. Let's do the one that messes everybody up all the time, okay? Oh, uh, which one do you need? Plus or minus? Yeah, no, the 
multiplication or division? Multipli multiplication or division is keep the lowest significant figure. Okay, so let's say, um, Let's do this problem. Oh, and then we'll do this. This is percent error, right? Okay, truth minus test over truth. Y'all remember that stuff, right? Okay. <clears throat> How do we do this? This is just basic math, right? Y'all can do this, but let's do this the way that you have to do it for sig figs, okay? Somebody tell me just this subtraction problem. And it's absolute value, so I don't care if it's positive or negative. Just, just tell me the difference. Say it one more time. 8.87, is that it? That sounds a lot better. Okay. 3.87. And it's negative, but then you absolute value it, so it's positive. Okay? Now, we still have the divided by 62.1, and you still have the 100% here. Okay? But now, we've done a step. It was a subtraction step. What's the rule with add addition and subtraction? Keep the least precise. So what's the precision of this one? tenths place, right? The first decimal point. What's the precision of this one? Hundredths place. And our rule is keep the what? Least precise. Okay, so what do we keep? Hundredths or tenths? Tenths. So our answer is good where? Tenths, right here. Now notice I'm not going to round it. We're not going to round it till we get to the answer but I'm going to underline it so I can keep track of it. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to underline the number. We're, this answer is good to the 8, but the calculation gives us one more decimal plate. Okay? Now do this quotient here. Do this division problem. What do you get there? Is that what you said? Can you give me, is there more? How many, it gives you a stack, doesn't it? Yeah, just go ahead and read, read, out, read it out to me. Wait, wait, you lost me. <laughs> just say it louder. Point zero six. Okay, and we still have times 100%. Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, so what's this number here? That was a division problem, right? What's the rule with division? There you go. Lowest sig figs. How many sig figs do we have upstairs? Two. The seven doesn't count. Our sig figs ended at the eight. We're only good up to the eight. So we only have two sig figs upstairs. How many sig figs do we have downstairs? Three. Which one is lowest? Two. So our answer has how many sig figs? Two. Does that make sense? Now I'm not going to round it yet. I'm not going to round it until we get to the final answer. Now we need to multiply this times 100. We can handle this one on our heads, right? That would be... 6.2318840 oh, six percent. Okay. Multiplication, what's the rule? Say it again. Lowest number of sig figs. How many sig figs do we have here? 
two. How many sig figs do we have here? Oh, what is it? What are you saying? It's infinite. Why? It's a count. It's it's a counted thing. It's a, it's exactly a hundred percent. This is exactly precise. So this is in, this is as if it's one hundred point zero 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 on 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 all day. It's infinitely precise. Now, and that's because it's a counted hundred percent. Okay. Now, if if it was a measured hundred, and you said this one, Lily, what would that be? If that was a measured hundred, what would that be? That would be one decimal place. One sig fig, I mean. But this is a percent, so it's a counted thing. So this is infinitely precise. So our answer is only good to hear. So our answer that we write is 6.2%. How y'all doing? Does this make sense? OK, any questions? My clock says that I'm 50 seconds over. So I guess we've got to be done here. OK. I'll see y'all next week. Get started on WebAssign, okay?